Hey, Algebra 2, this is day 2 of Unit 7. Um, so, really quick, we're going to talk about biases as well as just um, what does random mean, what does sample mean, that kind of thing. So, let's get this thing over here. Cool. Okay. So, what does random mean? Okay. Um, so, we talk about something being random. Um, it's going to be not predictable. Okay, um, doesn't follow a pattern, and most people aren't able to like kind of guess it. It's just kind of like happens. But what does random actually mean in statistics? Well, when we have a y'all heard of random sample, um, that means that weakation. Okay, um, and really what random actually is going to mean um, is that you're gonna have um, the, to be truly random is when the probability of the possible outcomes is equal. The probability of the possible outcomes is equal. Okay? And then what is a sample in statistics? What is a sample in statistics? Okay, so a sample is going to be a small part or quantity of the total population so everybody like you can't you can't go and say all right I'm gonna get everybody at South Gwinnett High School and everybody in Gwinnett County and I want to know what their favorite color is and see if it's blue is the most popular color no you're gonna pull a sample you're gonna pull a small portion proportion of the population to observe or study Okay, so for instance, it says a reporter wants to know how ways to ask the 100 people. For each method, explain the benefits and the drawbacks, then choose the method for selecting the 100 people that would best represent the people of the state. So go to the capital city, find 100 people interested in politics, and respond to the survey. Ask 100 mo uh, most politically influential people in the state to respond to the survey. Obtain a census data for the state and select 100 people from the list and to survey using a random process. Ask 50 registered voters who voted for the governor and 50 registered voters who did not vote for the governor to respond to the survey. So benefits and drawbacks. So good things and bad things about this. So the benefits of going to the capital city and finding the 100 people interested in politics is that it's easy. It's... Um, it's accessible, it's going to give you direct route to people who care, okay? Some drawbacks of this is um, maybe not everybody who votes is interested in politics, so there's going to be some bias in here. So there's going to be some bias. Um, and bias is saying that, you know, people who are interested in politics are going to feel some type of way. You know, they're going to be strongly Republican, strongly Democratic. So that's going to impact your results, right? Ask the 100 most politically influential people in the state to respond to the survey. Um, so some good things about this is that they're willing to probably help since they like politics. Um, and again, this is going to be easy. But some drawbacks on this is going to be that if they're so influential, then there's going to be a bias towards, um, so there's going to be a bias towards giving the correct answer since they're going to be so influential. So they're, they're not going to want to tell you something that you don't want to hear, right? Okay, so, um, attain a census data for the state and select 100 people from the list to survey. Um, this is great because it's going to open up to different types of people, different backgrounds, etc. Okay, and then the drawback from this is that this is going to be very broad, um, and it's not random. So that may result from 100 people in the same, 
you know, Gwinnett County is pretty big. So like you might pull hundred people from solely Gwinnett County and then it's kind of going to be biased, right? And then ask 50 registered voters who voted for the governor and 50 registered voters who did not vote for the governor to respond to the survey. Um, so the benefits of this is that you know they feel some type of way. And drawbacks for this is you kind of already know how they feel. So there's going to be a little bit of bias in that because they already voted, right? Um, so, and they already know who won the election probably, obviously the governor. Um, so you might have thought of some other benefits or drawbacks, that's fine. Um, those are the ones that I could think of really quickly. Um, so let's go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, which method is most likely to represent the people of the state? What group is being sampled in each method? And then why is random selection important when selecting a sample? Which method is most likely to represent the people of the state? So let's go back to this. What? So going back to these methods, um, so here are the four different types of methods that we're going to have. Um, so simple random sample is what you normally get. You just line your people up and you just kind of number them off. Um, systematic is you pick, um, you line them all up and then you go every third person or every second person. Stratified sample is you group people who are like, alike, and then you pull from each group. Um, and then cluster sample is going to be, you know, kind of people who are in the same proximity, you kind of group them together. So for each of these, we're going to put which method is most likely to represent the people of the state. So going to the capital city and then finding 100 people who are interested in politics to respond to the survey, this is going to be a convenient sample. Um, and I know that wasn't on the other one, but this is also could be just kind of like, hey, you're showing up to the capital and being like, hey, like 100 people who are interested in politics, come take the survey. OK, um, this could also be considered just kind of a cluster, depending on how they actually word it. But convenient sample is what we're going to go with. Um, ask, the, ask the 100 most politically influential people in the state to respond to the survey. Um, so this could be considered probably cluster, or it could be considered um, stratified, depending on how you want to word that. Um, but we'll go back to that one in a second. Um, obtain a census data for the state and then select 100 people from the list to survey a random um, using a random process. Um, so that's going to be either um, a system, a simple one or a systematic. Okay, so going back to this, this would probably be the best way to do it would probably be a systematic. Okay, but it could also be a simple random survey. And then 50 registered voters and non- people, that's going to be your cluster or your stratified. Probably your stratified because and this is going to be your cluster. For you. um, so stratified is going to be you get them with like people and then you pull different types. Okay, um, again, these all could be a little different, but that's okay. What group is being sampled in each method? So 100 people interested in politics. 100 most politically influential people. 100 people from the list to survey out of the entire census. If you registered voters who did or did not vote for the governor. And then why is random selection important when selecting a sample? Because... Otherwise, we will include bias results. So, for instance, if we come back here and we take all the people who, 100 people who are interested in politics, that's going to be bias, right? Again, people who are strongly passionate about that are ending on, they're probably on two different sides of the spectrum, right? 
Okay, so we're going to do something called a jelly blubbers. Um, so, scientists have recently discovered a new marine species, which they've named jelly blubbers. Unfortunately, the scientists have been arguing amongst themselves about to how to classify the species in terms of length. They have isolated a colony, but due to time and financial concerns, they cannot take a census in order to determine average length. In order to solve their dilemma, they have asked you um, to be their statistical consultant and help them over this hurdle. You have decided to take several samples in order to determine the best sampling design to help the scientists. For each sampling design, follow the instructions to pick your sample. Record the length of the jelly bubblers and then find the average length of your sample in centimeters. So you'll open up this document, right click it, uh, and this is going to come up. Okay, so it's cute little jelly bulbers. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, and then their actual link that goes with them. Okay, so coming back up here. Uh, you click on the other one, and it's going to give you two or like a couple of different ways to do your methods of sampling. Okay, and these are the different types. Okay, and then you'll find the mean, which is finding the average. You'll add them all up and divide by how many there are. And then which method do you think is uh, best for estimating the mean area for the entire population? And then there's some practice problems. Okay, so. You're going to take a couple of minutes and go over that, and then um, probably in your class, you'll go over that as well. And then your exit ticket, which method will address the intention of the study? So you're going to read this through and then pick which one would do best. So that is what you're working on today. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.